the UK had no excuse for prescribing the secular Baloch liberation movement, but to please the Pakistani dictator Musharraf. The UK, however, should know that if it were not for the secular Baloch people in the, re in the region, today Balochistan would have been full of Taliban extremists. Imagine how hard, hard it would be to tackle extremism in an area twice as big as the UK, full of Taliban and their supporters. These days we hear the news that Taliban are moving to Quetta, the capital of Balochistan. Baloch have always warned the Western powers and time and again about the spread of Taliban in their region. And in many instances, Baloch have openly said that Taliban are being systematically settled in Quetta in order to counter the secular Baloch national struggle. Similarly, we, we see other oppressive states are using the so-called war on terror to undermine the national struggles of oppressed nations. When Sri Lankan cricket team was attacked in Pakistan, the Pakistan state media and officials, including the Prime Minister of Pakistan, stated that the attack was carried out by Lashkar Taiba, an Islamic fundamentalist uh, organization. However, after meeting with the Sri Lankan president in Libya, the Prime Minister of Pakistan changed his statement and blamed the Tamils for the attack without a shred of proof. This is another example of collusion between the states. Though those states that have illegally annexed nations and tend to collaborate closely with each other against the nations under their occupation. The United Nations, especially the UN Human Rights Council, has become a forum where states support and ignore the wrongdoings and violations committed by other member states. Stateless nations have no or very little say in the UN. For this very reason, the United Nations has by, by and large ignored the illegal occupation of weaker nations. In order to keep Balochistan under the occupation, the Pakistani army and the Punjabi controlled state administration have dominated Pakistan's institution and the seat at the United Nations and other international forums. It is only that or is it only they that interact with outside world on behalf of the state? The Baloch are deliberately excluded from these key institutions. Their presence in such matters is absolutely none. In their eyes, my participation in this meeting is an act of treason because we are not meant to speak on an international forum. The, exclu the exclusion of voice voiceless nation from international organization would encourage the oppressors to continue their atrocities against our people. Oppressive states are globally unified and have combined forces to justify their criminal acts. They are trying to trying nationally and internationally to, to criminalize the normal and justified activities of suppressed nation in order to continue their hegemony over them. It is the responsibility of the stateless nation like the Kurds, the Targums and the Baloch to unite and challenge their unjust act on every forum. We must inform the international community about their inhuman acts and remind the West of its responsibility to our defenseless nations. Therefore, I appeal to all human rights organizations, humanitarian workers to unite and raise voice against the illegal occupation and human rights abuse of nations like Balochistan.